Hi friends, uh, our topic for deliberation today is entitled Sleeping with the Boss's Wife. Sleeping with the Boss's Wife. And the story is taken from Genesis chapter 39, reading from verse 7. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him and made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hands. Verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, Lie with me. But he refused. Verse 8. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotted not what is with me in the house, and he had committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? Genesis chapter 39 and verse 9 have mercy have mercy how many of us will take that stand today for Jesus today when tempted and it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day it was an ongoing thing for it day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her thank you Jesus and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house therein. And she caught him by the garment, saying, Lie with me, have sex with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had fled, that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of the house and spake unto them, saying, See, he has brought in an Hebrew unto us, unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. Listen, let's skip that. But go to verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph, and showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Friend, some of us, look at the situation. Look. I don't know, it says that uh, Potiphar treated Joseph with favor. But how many of us as men, even Seventh-day Adventists, even pastors, hmm, would be quick to feel like we got something over the boss to, sleep, to be sleeping with his wife when he's at work? Huh? How many of us would, we would even wait for the invitation? We would be giving Mrs. Potiphar the eyes. We would be touching her on her butt or pinching her breast. Or something giving her the eyes to sleep with her and we would take it to brag with our friends guess what man I am chilling with the boss's wife man I'm laying up with her you know I'm running things in the house you know we would we would be quick to boast with it and think of ourselves high and mighty by getting to sleep without with the boss's wife our, our, our boss's wife but here was a man of integrity who would not be bought or sold God still needs men like this to stand up for him. It, when nobody else is looking, there was no weakness in the house. Because this day, she made sure that all the men were outside the house. She alone was with Joseph. And that's when character counts. That's who you really are. When nobody is watching. But God is always watching. God is always watching. And you see, God, Joseph was a real man of God. And if we continue to liberate, uh, what's so interesting is that the Ten Commandments was not even given yet as found in, Levitical, in Exodus chapter tw um, 20 verse 8 to 11. was not even given yet. But you know what? Spiritual things are sp spiritually discerned according to 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. So you don't have to have the letter around you when the Spirit of God is in you to lead you and to guide you. 1 Corinthians. So therefore, although there wasn't such... As you would say, a commandment that says, Thou shalt not. That's why we know the commandments are as, are as eternal as God Himself. Because Joseph saw it as a great wickedness to commit fornication and adultery, even before the laws were uttered from Mount Sinai. God's laws are really important, place their written is in the heart. 
Let's just go to um, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 and see what Hebrews says about God's laws. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. And let's see if we can find it for you here, friend, to show you where God wants his laws written more than anything else. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. Hear what it says. God says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. For uh, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. When God's law is written upon your heart, they prevent you, they keep you from committing sin. As found, that's why David said in Psalms 119 verse 11, he says what? What did he say? Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. Joseph had the words of God in his heart, and that's why he did not sin against his God. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? Psalms 100 and, uh, and 19 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I may not sin against thee. And in the same Psalms 119 verse 105, the psalmist says what? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Oh, when you love Jesus, the law is not a burden, but it's a love verse. He says, verse, uh, verse 97 of the same Psalm 119 say, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. So when you love God, it's, it's, you don't have to, nobody has to be watching you. And when you look at some other texts also, like 1 Corinthians uh, not, not first Corinthians um, Romans 2 verse 13 to 15 Romans 2 verse 13 to 15 listen what it says here too uh, it says it says for not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall be justified for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law these having not the law are a law unto themselves which show the work of the law written in their hearts their conscience also bearing witnesses, and their thoughts, the, mean, the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. One another. So you see, the important place is for the law is to be in your heart. Not to be just talking about them and, and so forth. But when they are in your heart, they are guidance to, to keep you from sinning against God. So, uh, Proverbs, if we go to Proverbs 6, verse 23, listen what the, the, the wise man said to us there in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse, uh, I, I, I want to share this with you because this is very, very important text. Proverbs chapter 6, 23 to 29. It says, um, For the commandment is a lamp and the law a light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman is a man brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? So he that going, goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. So here we have it from the wise man again. Don't go into your neighbor's wife. Some of us go after, or even the church. Imagine in the church, pastors going after their parishioners' wife, having sexual affairs with them. Church brother having sexual affair with their, their church brother's wife. And church brother's wife having a sexual affair with their church sister's husband. Huh? When it's so plain in God's word, so he that he says, uh, uh, he says, um, so he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. And, and verse, verse 32 said, but, whoso, but whosoever commit adultery, committed adultery with a woman, lacketh understanding. He that doeth it, destroyeth his own soul. May the Lord have mercy upon us. Amen. God bless you.